This is the Green Army Pre-Runner. Not only is it like a sealed race car chassis, but it's also a mid-engine race car chassis. Hello, welcome. Let's try that again. All right, we are here at Green Army Motorsports. The Davis family has acquired a pre-runner that's uh, new to them, but it's been around for a while. If you guys know the history with this thing, then uh, you'll be able to identify it. But what we're gonna really focus on is kind of the construction of it and just go over the details because it's a very special pre-runner. It's an iconic pre-runner to a lot of people. More or less, this is really a trophy truck pre-runner, a luxury pre-runner, if you will. Way more race truck turned pre-runner. And you'll see exactly what I mean when we start to look at this thing. So we have some of the guys that work at Green Army in here. We have young Mason. Jeremy is in the office. And we have Troy. Howdy. This is the Green Army pre-runner. So, I mean, you guys can see right now it looks like a trophy truck. Not just a trophy truck, but a mid-engine B-drive trophy truck. Mid-engine meaning the engines behind the occupants. Troy, you're the guy that's been selected to tell us the nitty gritty details about the construction of this thing and when it was first built and who did it and all the stuff. Okay. Yeah, so um, let's lay into that. No problem. So what we got here is, uh, like you said, a V-drive mid-engine. It's basically a trophy truck that was a trophy truck and it's been converted to a, someone call a luxury pre-runner. Has AC, has full windows, and they are electric. And they're also mirror tent. And yeah, it gets kind of hot. Rally spec. Yeah. So <laughs> when this whole program started, this was obviously for a, a you know a team or whatever. They were going to build a couple. Yeah. Um, we know there's two. Yeah. Right. There are two that are still in our possession. Yeah. One is actually Jeremy Davis's race truck. There was another truck that wasn't built, but actually right now is being built. You can see it's all tinted up, except for the front. Um, yeah. It's plexiglass. We make a new window usually every two or three trips to Mexico. It's an all carbon body. Both the bodies are all carbon. That is real carbon. That's rad. I remember these things. There's twins. One went under the knife. They wanted to make it a sealed cab pre-runner, yes. which it's crazy because it's usually with a luxury pre-runner, you'd start with a cab of some sort, yes. build a tube chassis to the constraints of the cab. Yeah. And this is the other way where this was a working trophy truck yes. that now has a sealed cab and you can kind of see some of the finish work is a little interesting like this is a, obviously the a pillar sill to uh you know to what was it a 2015 uh, uh 2015 chevy? hd chevy pickup they actually took the door yep. and grafted it in here behind this and the sliders are in here and the back of the door and it's and they cut it off and it's all in there. You can see it. It's, it's, it's it pretty exposed. primitive. But there's this mechanism taken out of the door. It's literally they went yeah, they just and cut the door skin off and yeah. and sealed it. The other thing I noticed too, I mean, when you talk about like a luxury pre-runner or something, mm -hmm. this is a mid-engine. So not only is it like a sealed race car chassis, but it's also a mid-engine race car chassis. So mm -hmm. you can see right. like everything's Alcantara wrapped. And then you can see like there's windows back here. And those, are those, those are glass? glass? Yeah, they feel like glass. Yeah. You can see there's some viewing. Window. Oh, that's the LEDs, right? That that headliner was in the Truggy too, right? Where yes, it's got it's like there, yeah. windows and, and these windows that are up in here uh, behind the upholstery are just LED, they light up in there. So it's like an ambient light, right? There you go. For mood lighting. Mood lighting. Mood lighting. So. <laughs> some other interesting stuff and we can kind of digest the exterior portions, but since we're already here. Mm -hmm. Um, Stitch, the, the one thing I noticed on these, you know, before uh, you guys acquired them was that they all had, even the, they had no windshield, but they still had a stitch dash, like just yeah. for uh -huh. the other ones are almost identical. It's all suede up on the front and then whatever leather on this, on the, yep. on the front, so. And uh, you have your glove, your, uh, well, I guess your yeah. storage compartment in there. Yeah, we've got the center here. We have all the controls for the AC are down here and then your SATCOM right there. Yeah. There's the controls. There's another uh, USB down there as well as one here, the dipstick for the tranny, which is oh, actually straight down. Because mm -hmm. the, the tranny is right facing here. this way. Yes, it is yeah. reverse. And this thing's all on Motec electronics? Yes, sir. It's all up, up underneath here where it used to be a dry sump truck. The dry sump tank was right up there mm -hmm. and that all got removed and boxed in. One of the other things I noticed too is uh, Jason turned on his phone and then I heard subwoofers. Oh yeah, and yeah. Audio coming from the Yeah, side. this thing has all that stuff too. All underneath here, and here's the AC right here. Yeah, it's kind of your typical spot there oh, yeah. for that thing. 
Um, original chassis builders. Porter ES. Billy Gasper had a lot to do with these, yeah. if not everything, in conjunction with those guys. He spent a lot of time and a lot of years making things the right way. I remember like the Desert People series when they mm -hmm. had Damon Jeffries' Herman Motorsports yeah. mm -hmm. truck, which was a V-Drive truck. Yeah. Um, similar construction. Mm -hmm. And they were they were kind of the pioneers of using big tube on cars. Like they started using two inch rather early. Um, I think Robbie maybe was using some two inch. Yeah, Robbie, Robbie and Billy G. Yeah. Good friends. So they share ideas and Robbie's truck was first, I think. Okay. And at the same time these came out. Copy. So they kind of were I don't know if it was a coalition, but they were just, feeding off each other. They're they're friends and friends talk. Sure. And share ideas and you know some ideas go to that side of the fence, some come to this side of the fence. So. Sure. The other thing I've noticed too with a lot of the porter and the ES stuff is um they were doing like double pass welding oh, yeah. um, much sooner than well, a lot of cars. Now it's early 2000s maybe. Well, the thing something. is, is safety was number one. Yep. No one wanted anyone to get hurt or killed in one of their vehicles. So that was their main concern. Sure. Overbuild it, make it strong, make it tough. You will live. Yeah, you might get so, hurt, but you're not going to die. Exactly. That's the thing. Exactly. That's it, and that's what people think about these things. It's not necessarily like, you know, even like a spec truck like that. It's not so much if you crash, you're going to walk away completely fine, but you're not going to die. At the end yeah. of the day, you're not going to exactly. die. But did you die? So where'd this thing come from? Mexico. Mexico. So 500 pre-run? Yes. And it's kind of just been put away a little bit wet. It's going to go up to Troy's and mm -hmm. um, live there for a little bit and get the yeah. love, right? Mm -hmm. Get yeah, all the love. Yeah, we're going to check the rear end. It's probably going to go to Evan Weller to make sure it's okay so we yep. can put it in. I mean, it'll probably never break because this thing, it only has an LS3 in it. Just check it for wear, throw it back together, seal it up, fill it yep. back up, change the fluids, you know? So we have the sister car next door. Um, the I did the body on, we converted it to Truggy. Mm -hmm. um, really cool opportunity, but that thing's naked, so we can at least check her out and kind of see the inner workings oh, yeah. uh, after we go through this thing, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things I have noticed with this, it, it does share a lot of similar proportions as like a Robbie chassis. You should cut the front end off, is what I was told, and made it all billet. Mm, interesting. And all, you know, on, the whole it, front end. yeah, and I've noticed too with Robbie, he dives his chassis down, and then this is a one big bulkheaded structure that yeah. usually comes off, like all yeah. the coolers. This whole thing is like a big, well, it's kind of like that, right? Yeah, it's all. It's just on a boss, up. and then this is just on a King shock package. They're just black, right? Uh, yeah, but they're they're whatever came with it. I think it's King, but these are done by our buddy in Vegas that does our race shocks mm -hmm. too. It's mm -hmm. uh, Jordan Kundert. He does a lot of other people's stuff too. That's your typical rack center mount front end, right? The bigger Big. rack for the day. Like I said, these are a little older, mm -hmm. but you could still get parts for them and, you know, everything works well. Yeah. Works really well. As far as that goes, the Truggy puts out a lot more power. Same chassis, but what, have you had any shortcomings with making the thing through races? Oh, uh, that one, yeah. It's just a teething thing because we're used to front engine and there's so many more moving components sure. to that truck. I mean, we had some issues, but I think it was plumbing. Some of the lines on this, these trucks are older. We just haven't changed all of them just yet. Yeah. Yeah, just little things. Has the filter always been up in the, that spot? I think it had double filters on top. Like two cannons were on top of the intake. It was just sucking all the heat off the exhaust and sure. all the heat that comes out of the tongue because it's designed to be a flow through cab with no front window and no rear window. Exactly. So we had some tranny cooling issues, so we took the screen out, because we have a V-mount right here. Yeah. There's two coolers here, and there was some screen in here, and that screen really slowed it down a lot. Wow. So I took that out, had no problems, even when it was like 100, and, I don't know, 508. Yeah, I mean, what's the list of modifications that you've done? Like, what's the primary stuff that this has gone through to make it yours and kind of adjust things? Uh, when we, I think we put, put the fuel tanks, we put the fuel pumps in the tank because mm -hmm. they were back here under these panels and the, the coolers were just blowing straight on them and we smoked two fuel pumps. The fuel bladder was cracked because it was so old it sat around for so long. So we had Harmon make us a new bladder and we had him put these in. I mean, it may be warm back here, but at least they're submerged. Sure. And they're away from the coolers at least, you know. Is this a tank or a cell? This is the cell and inside is the bladder. Where do you take the portion off to get to the bladder? The, you gotta take the tire out, you know, Jason? cage, everything. So it like an unbolt somewhere? Cause usually with a cell you-, you It's this right here. It's a top. See this? Yeah. This whole thing holds the whole thing in. And then and where, to top. get to the bladder part. You, you would still go through the top where the pumps yeah. are at. The pumps would just come out. When you pull this plate off, this is your inspection plate. So when you pull this plate out, 
you can inspect the cell, then the back side of the can on this side of it, yeah. No, actually, the whole back of it unbolts. That's and pull what it, the bladder out. That that's way. what I was getting at. If from here, you don't see like all your little pickups, like your ten twenty fours or something, mm -hmm. or quarters. Yeah, they're all on the back side up. Okay, the so side. the front vertical panel is where the actual bladder can be serviced. Yes. Through the can. Gotcha. Yes. We'll cover a couple more things on the interior portions, and then we can go look at the naked one. The one thing that stands out, everything's pretty streamlined in here, and then I see the shifter. Well, originally, you can see this box right here in this switch, and you can see the uh, paddles on the wheel. steering wheel. Mm -hmm. There was some unit that was underneath here. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, like three different companies worth of stuff. Yeah. And it just, it overheated. You can see up here in the front, see the two yes. fresh air hoses? There's yep. two up here, and they actually plug into the front of the valence. And there was an attempt to keep it cool, because it overheats and it locks in first gear. Oh, shoot. So you gotta stop, turn it off, yep. turn the truck off, Reset it, and then you maybe get 10, 15 minutes out of it, and you're stuck in second gear or third gear, depending on when it decides to crap out. Yeah, that's tricky. So we just took it off. Jason mounted that up. It was like, we got to go. We couldn't find a replacement for it. Jason threw that together like right before we were going to Mexico, and Justin's fine with it. He's like, eh, it works. Yeah, absolutely. You know we can have that extra cable, and we can carry that with us in the toolbox or whatever, or in the chase truck. It doesn't cost us $700, 800 $1,200 for Unit. Definitely. When you spoke about the fresh air hoses that are being used for the cooler there, yeah. or, or to cool the that the unit that was yeah. there, there was like a mister system on the other car yes. that was like in front of the coolers where it had like little nozzles yeah. um, with hard line. Yeah, it has it has a spray bar. Theoretically going across like Laguna Slada, it's 115 degrees outside, 117. You can quench it if you want to, but the bad thing is if there's somebody in front of you and there's silt and dust, it'll clog the radiator up. Oh, yeah. So it's a double-edged sword. Or it's like putting grease down like an oil spill if you're getting chased, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. It's kind of like that. We did add some scoops up here to help with our cooling. I saw those. The roof does pass air. There is a scoop in the front, and it does have a you know, cavity under the roof to get some air circulation yep. back here, but we did have to add these scoops. Like Troy said, it is, turns into a big oven back here. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's really hard on, you know, your air conditioner. When it gets that hot, it usually vaporizes the Freon inside. And sure. You always have to recharge it. Yeah. So we're kind of working through that right now. We added this this bar right here to hold the air cleaner because it was just over the top of the intake. And then we added this box right here. Um, a little Izzy Fab hitter. A little it. Izzy Fab speed case mount. There wasn't really anywhere to hold, you know, sufficient amounts of tools for pre-running. And there is some storage in the back fenders here. You know, it's got all the old goodies still from uh, a little bit of Pedialyte. Some water and some snacks in there. Mm -hmm. You know, who knows what kind of, oh, some beef jerky, some old beef jerky. A little science experiment <laughs> beside that back in there. That's cool. Um, this does have an air jack on it too. Oh, yeah. Kind of holds our tow rope or our air jack and our bottle. Yeah, it's almost a little concealment there that the tire helps out with the holding. Do you guys have any upgrades or plans like as far as using it for pre owning Is there things that every time you're kind of like, oh, I wish we could have this or we need to add this? Or? The only thing that we're, we, we really need to add or modify to make work is to actually run a true 40. It can't run a true 40 as it is right now. It can mm -hmm. only run a 39 without ruining the beautiful body that's on this truck. Yeah. Where does it get caught up the most um, as far as the body work and the clearancing up on front? The front? On the front, it'll hit the actual, it'll hit the hood at the bottom. Yeah. And so on the rear, we can clearance enough to make it fit, but it's the light housings. It's all this. See which it already rubs on the light house, the light mounts. Yeah, you can see where. And you know, those are lights that already match the hood. We don't really want to. Yeah, so that's your Scion or your Subaru front light. A lot of the, yeah. the younger fellas like those cars, right? So we just have clearance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this have clearance issues with the 40, the door right here, yeah. the light, and even the reservoir. Oh, it goes to the reservoir too, bump and lock or yeah. something. Uh, I remember too, on the, and you know, you guys, I keep referencing the other car, the Truggy now, just because I kind of have my hands on it. So I remember talking about stuff like this mm -hmm. uh, when we talked about compressing, uh, you know, the thing at bump, um, yeah. and then there was something with the spacers, and you kind of took some of the bump clearance out of it. Yes. First off, what, what was that about? We might have to redo the bump steer brackets. Uh, this truck doesn't do it, but the Truggy does. The tie rod hits the bypass tubes, mm -hmm. and it's just because there's so much back angle from the spindle to the rack itself past the bypass, so when it's at a full left turn or right turn lock, it'll actually touch the, the tie rod. Copy. Um, but everything that's really been modified is, you know, most of the time is a last minute, you know, change. You know, we had much laps to try to keep from, you know, we're trying to keep these bodies really nice. Yeah. They are 
a work of art themselves. Yeah, they're pretty. So we put some mud flaps on the front. Everybody thinks it's four-wheel drive, but it's not. <laughs> it's just to keep some of the raw chips off the bare carbon. I mean, it does have the clear coat over it, but... Sure. The other thing to note, too, is even the interior panels are all carbon. Uh, and this stuff yes. was being done before a lot of cars, like nowadays, are carbon's more of a common thing, but this is... This was done a while back and all yeah. of it has gone through like that. Yeah, it's awesome. Definitely at the, the forefront of doing carbon, especially carbon inner panels and everything. That sealed cab thing was the coolest thing. I remember seeing like a couple pictures that like slipped through on social and I saw like this thing just all black like that with the sealed cab or in the window up and I'm like, what? Someone finally did that. Cause that's my novelty little concept. Like I'm not a huge like race car guy. So like having something with a sealed cab like that is sick. We did have to make it big man friendly cause you know, a couple of our drivers are on the huskier side, but uh, bigger guys. So we put some bigger PRPs in there. Sure. And they had big door panels in it. We had to kind of. Jason's big power move here is that he's he is the crew chief and the the prep guy around here. So this thing had like robust, robust would do it right. Yeah. Door panels yeah. that took shape from the dash and drew into the side portions of the cab, and they were uh, thickums. So Jason said, we need to fix that and uh, sawzalled the yeah. out of those things. Not right. those ones, but we did take them out. Yeah, to make some room. Oh, what did you do? We just took those ones out. Oh, okay. The other truck, they, they might have got sawzalled. <laughs> okay, going back to the full sealed, I mean, it's even fully sealed the trans tunnel. So they actually used some cabin filters in this compartment right here that yeah. actually feeds fresh air into the truck to kind of keep the dust though to a minimum. So it's not filling up that empty cavity in there, you know, and yeah. possibly seeping through the cab. Yes. So you don't see any dust in there at all. There's no. never, that's awesome. <clears throat> Do you have any things you want to modify in the cab? We don't want to modify it too much and ruin the sealability of it. Yeah. I mean, if it was the race car, I'd obviously modify it to make it easier for us to work on in the shop. And, yeah. You know, Cause it takes a lot of time to take this truck apart. Sure. It's like working, like Troy says, like working on an onion, you just gotta start peeling the layers off mm -hmm. to get in there. Yeah. And they're endless. <laughs> you want to take one thing off, you just tear the whole truck apart. It's, no, just do it. I, I think the only real major change we're going to try to work on figuring out is trying to add some mufflers to it. It's a little sure. jet boat. It's yeah. a little loud. It, it's very similar. You can see your intake manifold, classic LS in there. Just like a boat flipped up header and then right out to that guy. Your primary is just right out to your exit. Yeah, right out. It. It's all the noise. Yeah. So I think we can go look at the sister car. We have the sister car here. This is more of your dedicated race platform, but this is essentially the same exact chassis. Things we notice, or I notice right off the bat, is this. This is your telltale V-Drive, is when you have your offset diff. I do see sometimes it's on one side versus the other. When Robbie built his truck, he put it originally, the drive shaft, out the passenger side. Yeah. But as race drivers, they hit everything on the passenger side. Sure. I know. I get yeah. hit with everything. Trees, rocks, anything, I'm in the hole. So what he did, he kept hitting them. So I said, you know what, we're gonna have to flip this. I'm gonna have to put it under my ass. So it never gets hit. Yeah. So order of operations for this thing. We have rear axle, uh, EWR diff, driver side location. So that's your prominent thing. Drive line sink up the top. And then where do we go from there? Okay, right under your right butt cheek is the center bearing. Mm -hmm. And it's supported by a urethane insert. Yep. And every race we take this out and we change these. The, at least the bearing inside, because if this thing goes, there's a stainless plate right here. Mm -hmm. And that's you right there. You're that far away. Yeah, and, and just the scale. So this is your submarine strap for the driver's seat. Right on top of the stainless plate here is the driver's seat, the composite seat. Well, yeah, that's composite seat. Uh, and then what we're talking about is the carrier bearing. This is billet on the outside, but that's your traditional kind of polyurethane carrier bearing, which yeah. is always a weird weak link on things. Yeah, so that's why we get them changed every race, or at least get them certified. So we got our diff, main drive shaft, carrier bearing, and there's another drive shaft that goes through here and goes to your V drive, right? Yes, sir. Now your V-Drive is just two gears in there? Yes. yes. And then does the, the V-Drive give you an extra ratio so you don't yes. have to run a, a crazy gear in the back? Yeah, it actually, you can change the gear ratio and your percentage. So it's like having underdrive already built in. Sure, so V-Drive and then what that thing does, just kind of like a boat, is it flips it. And now your rearward portion, your output shaft of the transmission is facing forward. This is forward of the car. And then the motor is actually facing backwards. Okay. Following the trans oil pan, then you go through here, and this is a dry sump, so it's probably got a daily, uh, yes. daily dry sump, and that means that the it's a pressurized oil system, 
Um, there's always pressure there and, and there's no actual sump pan towards the rear here. It's just a big pump, a billet pump that's hard mounted into the pan uh, that you see here. And then all of your drive system. Uh, alternator looks like it's in a really easy spot to change or easier towards the back. Um, and you know, that's your motor. One of the other things I noticed too with this uh, chassis is how beautiful some of the plate work and the bulkheads are. Like your trailing arm and your upper link pivot, like it's a huge structure. The foundation for the truck is actually a wishbone. There's tubes that go through it mm -hmm. to link it all together. So that's the actual backbone and then everything else is built off of that. Yeah, I'd refer to that as like a Y-frame. And it's the same thing, so when you get under here, it's, it's a tall one too. I mean, it's gotta be four inches plus, but you'll see that structure. That's all big stacked plate, four-sided plate with through holes that are all welded. And that goes all the way to the front, connects the, the arms front. and right to the, to the lower A-arm front pivot. And then you can see under here, it's just a huge Y-frame. I mean, it's definitely the biggest one I've ever seen on a car. You know, on that same sense of building strong stuff and making it last, um, the rigidity aspect of this is insane. All right, well, I think what we're gonna do is take it outside and let you hear it and see it and all that good stuff. Super hungry. the uh, Green Army pre-runner. If you guys have interest in seeing more of it, you can always follow Green Army, follow Justin, Jeremy, Troy, do you have an Instagram? Uh, no, I don't. So he just lurks. Phone number. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Troy. Sure thing, anytime. Thank you, Mason, Jason. Uh, and hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day. Like, comment, subscribe.